Today I'm doing something a bit different instead of perfume reviews. Uh, I'll, I thought it'd be a good idea, or at least fun, to go through some of my vinyl records. It's sort of a hobby that I've recently gotten into. Uh, mostly vintage vinyl records, um, and by vintage I mean they haven't been printed in many decades. So I'll start with the first record that I've actually ever bought. This is Duke Ellington. Uh, this is one of my favorites. I really enjoy jazz, and this particular album has uh, some of my favorite songs. Um, let me show you the record here. I always like the unique designs that they have. So this particular record has uh, a variety of songs, Warm Valley, uh, In a Sentimental Mood, which is my favorite, Black and Tan Fantasy, you know, lots of different songs. And I, I specifically chose this album because it has In a Sentimental Mood, which is like I said, my favorite um, song from this artist. And let's see, I, I want to say the album itself was printed in the 70s. I don't know for sure because there's no actual date on the album. But yeah, Duke Ellington is just such a classic, um, you know, jazz figure. And I actually have quite a few other jazz albums in here. Uh, and you'll soon see that my taste in music is very specific, um, even though I'll probably listen to whatever, but depending on what I will spend my money on, I'm very specific. The next one, Glenn Miller. How can you not like Glenn Miller if you're into jazz? Uh, Moonlight Serenade is the first one on the disc, I mean, you know, you can't get better than that. Uh, Little B Brown Jug. Tuxedo Junction. Now, the thing that I really like, I love the RCA Victor records with the, uh, let me see, when they have the little dog on it with the Victrola, that's like the best. Uh, they, they used to call the Victrola the Victor talking machine, and the reason why these records have the little dog on them is because uh, the old advertisements for the Victrolas, um, their motto was um, his master's voice, referring to the little dog who could recognize his master's voice through the clear, um, the you know, clear sounds of the Victrola machine. And back then that was a big deal, like, oh, the dog, even the dog knows that this is high quality audio. So that was a big selling point back then. Uh, so let's see, Glenn Miller, then the other other jazz record that I have, which is actually the latest one that I bought, Artie Shaw. Um, you can see here, lots of songs on this one. Um, the first one that I really like, uh, yeah, it's called I Can't Get Started uh, With You. And then the next one is Scuttlebutt, A Room With A View. They're all good, but the first one is my favorite. Uh, you can see this one here. And my, my preferred jazz, if you could say, uh, mo mostly from the 1930s or 40s. However, there's some really good options between uh, the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So, uh, you know, as long as it's good jazz, I'll probably like it. Now, at this point, uh, I, my music tastes start to uh, drift. Um, the next one that I have, which is also a recent purchase, is Nat King Cole, uh, Love is the Thing. So here's the thing, um, I get most of my records off of eBay because they're much cheaper and uh, you can find like actual vintage records more easily uh, on eBay versus Amazon, which wants you to basically cut off your own arm and sell it to them because they're super expensive. This is... Uh, and it doesn't kind of follow that route. This is, this was only $20, I think, um, which is cheap for an Amazon record because, I mean, I've seen some that are like 40 or more dollars, which I think is a bit ridiculous. Um, so here's the 
This is a very stylish record, in my opinion. Nice and sleek and simple. So, the thing, uh, this is a very sturdy record. It's like heavy, which you don't really get usually with your records. Uh, all of these songs are wonderful. Um, Stardust, uh, Where Can I Go Without You, you know, all the, all the classics. This record is definitely thicker than usual. You probably can't tell, you know, but definitely thicker and heavier than usual. Also, Nat King Cole is, of course, a classic from, uh, what do they call them? The crooners from the 50s, along with uh, Frank Sinatra and uh, Dean Martin. I've been ma meaning to get a Dean Martin uh, vinyl record. I do not have one yet, but one day in the future. Then, what do I have? Okay, this one is actually a mix. This is Golden Hits to Remember from the 50s. So this is actually, this is a mix of several different artists, and there's actually two albums, uh, two discs in here. Two of them. So, let's see. I like that it's a mix of different artists because then you don't, you know, you don't get sick and tired of one type of sound. So, you can see here what it looks like. This is a flimsier, flimsier disc. Um, Blue Velvet, La Vie en Rose, uh, Harbor Lights, you know, a bunch of classics. Song from the Moulin Rouge, you know, if you're into that kind of music. Uh, this is discontinued, I believe. I don't think this is printed anymore, so you have to, you don't have a choice but to go on eBay and hope to find a copy of this. Um, in fact, most of my records, except for the, the few that I got off of Amazon, most of them have been discontinued for many a decade, um, which is kind of cool, but also makes them very hard to find. The next one that I have is another kind of, um, I suppose, odd one. Uh, Charles Aznavour, uh, The Old Fashioned Way. So this is, I really like this one. Uh, this I actually did not get off of eBay. I got it at my, at my local uh, uh, vinyl record store. Um, which I was I was surprised to find it. First of all, it's French. Uh, well, actually, he sings in English, but he's French. Um, two, this is from the seventies. I don't. It doesn't say anymore, but there was a sticker on it that said nineteen seventy-seven, I believe. So that's the second reason why I was surprised to find it. Third reason um, is that I didn't know that uh, this was even a popular genre of music in the United States. So. Let me get the record out. Check this out. So, pretty simple record. Uh, black, uh, I guess, label. I don't know what it's called. Um, in the middle. And then, all, I like all of these songs. Uh, this singer, in particular, has a very unique voice. Almost like a... Almost, almost warbly sort of voice, but like, in a good way. So, um, a bunch of hits. Uh, she... Uh, yesterday when I was young, uh, the old-fashioned way, you know, that sort of thing. So, very fun record. Uh, since it's from the 70s, it has a bit more of a, of a funky vibe, but still very sentimental, very, um, you know, the French romantic sort of fashion. Then, I'm not done yet, <laughs> I have a few more uh, to go through. This is where I'll probably lose a lot of interest from people because it's a, a significant departure um, from the other stuff. Uh, we start getting into classical. This is Vivaldi, uh, Cello Concerto. What is this? This is actually an import from Europe. You could see by this golden stamp from the Netherlands. Uh, Netherlands Chamber Orchestra. Yeah, look at that. Out in the forest playing the cello. So. This is a very, very pretty um, record, if you're into classical music. Vivaldi is top tier in terms of classical music. Now, I want to say this record was produced in the 70s, but I don't know. It looks like it was produced in the 70s. Here's the record. So, you know, nice sort of simple, but it does the job. Uh, 
lots of these songs are in, what, German? <laughs> I don't think I can pronounce them. Concept. G. Whatever. Very pretty. Very, um... J nice sort of chamber music if you, you know, you want to put something on for dinner, you know, to relax. It's a good option. Now, actually, here's an interesting thing. This record, uh, I technically, um, did not buy intentionally. Because this record, along with, what are the other ones? Yeah, this, okay, here. This record along with another Vivaldi record, this one, which I will show in a second. Then this one, and this one. These I bought off of eBay uh, from a, uh, I don't know what it's considered, but basically you make a purchase of like three or four or five whatever records, how many you want. And the person selling the records will just choose, because they have a huge collection, so they'll just choose for you out of this genre, which is like classical. And they'll choose, so it's like kind of like a mystery box surprise, you know, which I think is kind of fun and uh, interesting. So I got these kind of randomly, and uh, fortunately, they're all very good. Um, I actually like this Vivaldi better than the other Vivaldi album, because it's just... Some of the songs are really powerful, um, and very less relaxing, but more engaging than the other ones. Um, here you have the label, pretty simple, pretty simple, sturdy record. Um, where's, okay, this is side one. The, the Side one, the first song is my favorite. It's uh, Concerto in C minor, Allegro non molto, um, which is just uh, a really delicious sort of song. And then the rest of the music, of course, is also very, very, um, very nice. This is apparently from the Musical Heritage Society. I didn't notice that before. Um, so those are the only two Vivaldi's that I have. Um, I have been meaning to get uh, Mozart because it's, you know, you gotta have, if you're into classical, you gotta have a Mozart album somewhere. Then I also would really like to have um, Strauss, Richard Strauss, um, specifically Salome. That's my favorite. Um, so here's something that I actually never heard of before. This very interesting art. This is uh, Rodrigo, uh, Concierto de Aranjuez, uh, and then also Via Lobos. So actually two people um, are responsible for this album. Apparently, this Rodrigo guy was a very, very famous uh, Spanish guitar player, I think in the 40s. Um, you can see what it looks like. So, this is also conducted by the English Chamber Orchestra. I also don't know when this was produced, but it, it looks like it's from the 70s. You can see even this, the sleeve. It's, it's pretty old paper. So, you know, most of these are either from the 70s or from the 50s that I have, um, if they're not from Amazon, and very few of them are. So, the other one that I got from that, uh, I suppose, the, the mystery order, is Mahler, which is, uh, I don't often listen to Mahler, but this one has Symphony Number no. 1 in D, the Titan, <laughs> in red letters. Uh, and this is, uh, I mean, Symphony no. Number 1 is what Mahler is um, most known for. So you can't really go wrong with that. Um, I mean, like I said, Mahler's not like my favorite, but it's still good stuff if you do, if you want to listen to something different. Nice orange um, label. Very stylish, sleek. And then, then we get into even the more hardcore classical music, which few people, I believe, will be interested in. However, uh, they're some of my favorites, and these ones are also my oldest in, in, the, in my collection. I'm going to start with this big boy. This is actually, all of the rest of them are box sets, and um, 
I'm, you know, if you know what a box set is, it's just a set of, of vinyl records in a box, which this is. So, Madame Butterfly by Puccini, which is an opera, and it's also a Victor uh, RCA record, which makes it even better for me. This was, uh, I want to say this is 1960. This is old. This is, uh, and I don't know where it came from. I got this on eBay. I got all of the box sets on eBay. Funnily enough, you would think box sets would be expensive, especially- I got four. I have four box sets. All four box sets cost me like $20, which, I mean, like, like I said, on Amazon, you can get one record for $20. So, you know, if you're into records, I recommend eBay. So check this out. I'm gonna- the records in this box set are actually my favorite in terms of appearance, because they're- I mean- Look at this beauty. That's- that's fantastic. Nice little dog, beautiful red, sleek, sturdy record. I have a theory, I don't know if this is true, but it seems like the older records that I have, the thicker and sturdier they are. And I don't know what that's about, but... Like, even the records from the 70s seem flimsier from the ones from the 50s and 60s, so... I don't know if that's just the the brand, or if that's the year, or whatever, but anyway. There's like three records in this box set. I'm not gonna pull them out all out, because it's, it's just too much work. But Madame Butterfly, very, very beautiful, um, very tragic story, um, set in Japan. Then, wait, who sings this? Leotine Price. All right, I don't know her, but next one I do know. Renata Tibaldi, La Traviata. This is, uh, actually, this is Verdi. Verdi composed this a uh, long, long time ago. And, um, uh, this is London Records, and Renata Tibaldi was a huge, very famous opera singer in her time. This record I'm trying to remember. I want to say 1955 it was printed, um, but I can't be sure because I don't remember. Uh, it's- I think it's the second oldest one that I have. So cool thing, when you open the, the box, it has a little um, synopsis of each act and each, uh, like, the- just what's happening so you don't get lost because they are singing in Italian, so if you don't know Italian, especially this is an old form of Italian, so even Italians probably won't be able to catch up with it. So they have a nice little, you know, synopsis so you can know what's going on. Then, uh, let's get the record out. So, this is a bit more of a simple record. Simple looking. You can see here. Um, this is probably my favorite one to play. Uh, just because I like the music the most. Verdi is uh, probably my favorite composer, or at least top five. So, definitely, and again, very sturdy record from the 50s, so... Uh, there you go, I guess things were built better back then. Um, and, <laughs> I guess if you don't know how to play records that has a little... The record sleeve itself has a little instructions. And surprisingly, despite this being uh, 70 years old, it's in good shape. Look at this. It has a few scuffs. And it, it seems to be made of cardboard, but I guess a very sturdy type of cardboard. Then, I have two more. This one, I actually have not played yet. The Pirates of uh, Pen Penats. I don't know how to pronounce it. But this is unique because this is a an English opera. Operas are almost never sang, sung in English, because it just didn't really take off in England. The English weren't a big fan um, when opera was introduced. Uh, check out the interior, though. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I haven't listened to this, so I can't, I can't say how, um, how jazzy it is yet, but um, the records themselves have a pretty unique look if I can get them out of the box. All right, check this out. Vitrola. This is actually a very kind of like wine Merlot color for the label. Um, 
recorded in England. There's several discs in here. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to get around to this because I have, it's, it's famous, it's, you know, a famous English opera. So, eventually I will listen to it. Now, the last one on my list is actually the oldest that I have from 1953, uh, here. Uh, this one. This is Calvelliera Rusticana, um, which was composed by uh, Mascagni. So the thing about this, also, you could see in the big letters, this was produced at Teatro alla Scala, which is um, the most famous and uh, one of the largest opera houses in Italy and in the world uh, in Milan. So the other cool thing is that um, the main soprano singer, can't, uh, probably can't see, Maria Callas, who was um, another very, very famous female opera singer. So yeah, this is from 1953 and it's the oldest one that I have. And these are, this is an angel record, uh, I guess, production. And it also has the most unique appearance. So check this out. It actually has a little angel on a vinyl. So definitely unique. Um, yeah, this is the the, fir the first few songs on the first um, disc of the first record are really, really good, in my opinion. The whole first side, really, really good. Very, again, this is a, uh, who is this by? Mascagni. Pretty much every opera you'll, you'll ever listen to, it ends tragically. So, <laughs> if you, I mean, you can listen to opera without paying attention to the story, but um, they all end tragically. So, prepare yourself for that. Uh, other than that, that's all the records that I have. So basically jazz, uh, I guess music from the 50s, and then classical music are currently what I will spend money on for my vinyl collection. And the really cool thing, again bringing up eBay, a lot of these uh, just kind of one off, like just simple albums. Uh, you can get them for really cheap. Like this one, my Artie Shaw, this I think was only five or six dollars. Uh, some of them are four dollars, some of them are three dollars. And you might be thinking, oh, what about the condition? You know, uh, these are all very good plus, or you know, very good and anything above that. Um, I might have a record that's good plus. But they all play really nicely. Uh, they're all very smooth. The quality isn't compromised. Um, maybe if you're an audio aficionado, you might be a bit more particular about what you get. But um, for me, the audio is just fine. And you, I mean, you could get a whole shelf of records for really, really cheap. And there are people with, you know, estate sales, and they want to get rid of the, these these collections that took years to accumulate, so they want to get rid of as many as possible for as cheaply as possible. So, yeah, I mean, my, my, if you want my recommendation, if you want to get some nice records, go to eBay instead of Amazon, because Amazon's gonna rip you off, and you won't be able to find what you want anyway. Like, most of these albums that I have, you cannot find on Amazon, or anywhere else except for eBay, so, <laughs> there you go. Um, but that's pretty much all I have to say about my vinyl records. Uh, I know they're very pe uh, peculiar and unusual because um, most people don't listen to this type of music, but that's that's uh, what I listen to. So, uh, If you have any opinions about these records or anything, uh, you can leave your comments in the comment section down below. If you like the video, leave a like, maybe subscribe, and I make videos throughout the week, so stick around for those.